Alright guys, so we're going to go over how to do a, a simple but effective tartan for all of you painting brewers and uh, just so that you can get uh, a good result with what's really not a lot of effort but will look deceptively, uh, deceptively complicated and impress your friends. So um, as you can see we're, uh, we're just doing a little example on, on our buddy Spigot here. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've just done the, the base coat and shading. So we've got uh, sort of the base yellow tan that uh, I'll probably use for the butchers. And then we're going to need three more colors. We're going to need a light green, we're going to need a dark green, and we're going to need kind of like a maroon. Now you can do just about any three colors you want. Just one of them needs to be a light, one of them needs to be a dark, and then one of them needs to be something else altogether. So you could do light blue, dark blue, yellow, you know, you could do, well, maybe not yellow because it would work with the tan, but you get the idea. So anyway, so what you're going to do is get started. You're going to take a little bit of the, the light color that you're working with, and you want to pull up just a, a nice thin, nice thin layer of this paint. Let's see if I can get around the camera here. And you're just going to start drawing some nice lines and you need to be a little a little wary here because the the folds of the fabric will make it difficult to do perfectly even lines but we really don't need to be perfect just uh, good enough and then you're gonna go about the width of your line up and draw another one uh, have a nice Springy brush is always good for this. For this, I I like the uh, I like the white nylon for detail work because it tends to be a little stiffer and a little more springy. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like nylon. Uh, I I think that in certain applications like this, for instance, it does have its it does have its uh, advantages. There we go. You don't have to like get like I said. You don't have to leave this perfect. And in fact, if you leave a little bit of a little bit of a fade to the paint, so that it's not a perfect block, it'll sort of shade itself, which is a uh, kind of a nice advantage there, as it sort of takes the the lights and darks that are underneath it. So then. Uh, go all the way around. Alright, so now what you're going to do, you've done you've done it this way. Now, we need to go the other way. Because the way tartan actually works is that it's it's a thread combination where you've got a, about equal amounts of a dark green and a yellow going in this crosshatch pattern. And they alternate. So where the green threads intersect in the crosshatch, that's going to be a solid green. And where the threads intersect yellow in the crosshatch, it's going to be the solid yellow. And where they intersect each other, it's going to be a light green. So what we're painting right now are where the yellow and green are intersecting. And we've already painted where the yellow intersects itself. And we will get to where the green intersects the green. So... There is your, and then, you know, again, we're going about the same width in both directions, so you get a nice, even, square crosshatch. Just kind of clean this up a little as we go. And I mean, you know, these are just, these are just lines. It's nothing, uh, nothing crazy to this at this point. So there we go. So now we've got a nice, a nice, even grid and as you can see I'm not even I'm not even really trying that hard to be perfectly accurate because this is sort of a this is sort of an area effect so and you know it's, it's pretty small this paint's kind of thick we need to thin it a lot all right so now we're gonna go we're gonna switch to our our darker tone again we're gonna thin it out a bit 
ever want to use full strength paint if you don't have to because it'll it'll go on uh, clumpy and obscure detail so you always want to thin your paint a bit all right now what we're going to do is we need to get these intersections so where the green lines going in the two directions meet we're just going to paint in a dark green square that first one wasn't so good all right so you're just going to kind of come in and really i mean you can do this just as kind of a a dot really you don't even have to try for a a perfect square nobody's going to complain if you do put a little extra effort into it but just a nice you know kind of squarish dot is all you really need there so now you see we've got kind of our our intersection tone there so it's a darker it's a darker and uh, if this was actually going to, to stay on this figure, I'd go and clean up that, that little square there that I messed up to begin with, just fill in a little yellow there. But, alright, so now, uh, there's always kind of a, well not always, but a, in most cases there's sort of an accent thread that runs through. And this is just, these are just really thin lines of another color. And there can be two of them, there can be one of them. In this case it's just easier to just do one so what we're going to do is we're going to come back in and we're going to get our crimson which I put way too much on here and we are going to uh, not quite I don't want to run this right down the exact center uh, one thing I've noticed in looking at tartan patterns is they tend to these accents tend to be a little off center so we're going to come in and kind of just to the side of the the green stripe here we're going to drop the the thinnest thinnest line that you can draw right along like that and we'll do it again over here again just the thinnest thinnest line that you can draw. Alright, now <clears throat> because these go in both directions as well, you're going to come in and you're going to pull it across and just carefully going over those ridges so you don't spray the, the brush out wide and leave yourself a, a big thick glop on the top of each one of those bumps. You just kind of roll with the roll with the cloth there. So we're gonna come in. We're gonna drag another line through. And then we're gonna drag another line through. And you know you just come on these sides and, and pick up the, the little bits on the edge. And really, I mean that's it. I mean you've uh, you finished a tartan. Let's see if we can get. Uh, Better light on this, and you can see maybe what we've accomplished here. So, again, quick, easy. Um, yeah, it's not a uh, it's not a difficult technique, but it is one that's going to look good. You know, it's going to look good at a distance. It's going to look good up close, and you know, you get it by doing exactly what tartan actually does with the the different sort of layers of the color there. So. Hopefully some of you will uh, will find that useful, and we'll see some more uh, we'll see some more plaid brewers out there. So, all right, guys, uh, this has been uh, Phil from uh, the Gilball Tonight podcast, and uh, that's uh, a brewer's tartan tutorial video. Talk to you later.